Finally, some remarks on platform as a service. Um, so, um, well, I should say the dedicated remarks on platform as a service. And uh, we have here this by work, working at the platform level, which uh, this is Microsoft, which Azure came out as solely offering a platform as a service. Now it offers infrastructure as a service. So you previously, originally Azure, when this slide was made, was purely platform as a service. <coughs> and it aimed to provide the complete system that you needed uh, to develop your software as a service without worrying at all about the lower level infrastructure issues. People then later found that, uh, that's why I guess Azure changed, that users wanted a greater control of their, their stack. And so they offered, uh, they unbundled things and offered these things as different, differently. Uh, so this is um, yet another statement that gives some examples of platform as a service, Hadoop, MapReduce, Dryad. Big Table, Chubby, that's a synchronization service. And MapReduce, which was designed for information retrieval, but is actually excellent for a wide range of data analysis applications. And I pointed out earlier that we need to extend MapReduce to iteration. This is a detailed list of technologies. The ones at the top are sort of rather traditional ones. They're valid for grids and clouds. You might say older after older systems and with new systems. Authentication authorization, you want to be able to, uh, that has to be highly reliable, preferably single sign on. And uh, this is written for future grids, so you'd want a single sign on between uh, your future grid system and other commercial clouds. Workflow, you want service that allow you to link uh, uh, services. Together, that's what enables you to um, um, to produce fully uh, full integrated pipelines. We have data transport. We have software as a service, um, which we've already discussed. That's but we say what this stresses is software as a service didn't really come from clouds. It was already present in service oriented architectures. We certainly need relational databases. We certainly need program libraries where we store, uh, originally we stored um, libraries like um, math libraries and program libraries. Now we want to store complete images and complete applications. We have a basic storage, which is a blob or S3 in Amazon, so called object store. Uh, we want these so called data parallel file systems, which are things like HDFS from Hadoop, the Google file system. Um, Microsoft have one called Cosmos, which I don't think they're continuing with, except internally, but not making it generally available. These have so-called compute data affinity. You do the computing on the same node, which has the has the data. Tables. This is an example of no so-called NoSQL technologies, which is um, pretty exciting. Uh, HBase is the probably one of the best known, but also MongoDB. Is in or Cassandra are also available here. We want queues. Um, Azure and Amazon both offer queues as a platform as a service offering, and I think more people should use so-called published subscribe systems like that. Azure has the interesting concept of optimized images, which you then later customize further. They have so-called worker roles and web roles, and I think these are a pretty interesting idea which deserves more thought that we can provide. These are like appliances, which are not complete appliances or complete images, but they're partially customized. So they, for the web role, there will be uh, a web server sitting there already implemented. And the worker role will already be able to go and uh, go to its master uh, server and request one. So, man, we also pointed out that MapReduce is an important, we've discussed that many times. So this is a, some of the detailed platform as a service and other level other levels, what you need to put together to make a good cloud. And at the top here, we have things that we already learned about from previous uh, systems. This is shown uh, a little bit again here from um, uh, the, you know, the, the endless pictures like this of um, 
of architectures, and uh, we have business processes. This comes from the business world. We have uh, broadly based things: analytics as a service, governance as a service, development as a service, information as a service, security as a service, management as a service. Quite what these things mean is not so obvious. Rule as a service. Who knows what that means in detail? All of these things should be available. They should be packaged as a modular fashion, and whether we want to call this a service is uh, not so clear. Collaboration as a service, that's a good example of what, uh, not so clear what that means. We know that um, collaborative systems like Google Docs or SharePoint. Um, they're built of services, and some aspects of them look like services. So that's uh, here's another view from um, um, <coughs> comparing Google App Engine, Amazon Web Services, and Azure. This is an old view of Azure, certainly, and Google are both. Google now has the Google Compute Engine, which is infrastructure as a service. When this was written, the App Engine and Azure were only available as platform as a service. And Amazon has added, they've all grown together. Amazon has added more capabilities. So it's actually a very full platform as a service. Azure has added the bottom level infrastructure as a service. And Google has added the bottom level compute engine. So it's added, added infrastructure as a service. But originally they started off at uh, different levels. And as people, as people learn what people wanted, the infrastructure as a service people learned the platform as a service was needed, the platform as a service people learned that pure infrastructure as a service was needed. And um, here we have this points out this gives a moment, this points out this this um, continuum. Here we have when this was written 2009, Amazon was more IAS. And Azure was more PAS, but not quite as platform as a service oriented as Google. And we were at a continuum from a very unconstrained at this level to very constrained at this level. And as we drew that picture today, it will be all smeared uh, between the different providers. But still, it's true that a given user is likely to find a sweet spot in here exactly how much. Um, Automation they want and how much flexibility they want. Because there's more user effort, the more flexible the environment is. And this points out that Amazon offers quite a lot of platform as a service. And uh, here it has some of these capabilities, which are all plat largely effectively platform as a service levels. And here's the ones I have in March of 2013. <coughs> So I'm signed up for all of these things, which are all these. Uh, here we have queues, which are platform as a service, Sto storage, workflow, simple DB, virtual private cloud, dot, dot, dot. Auto scaling, that's um, elasticity, and so on. Two, it's all very complicated, you can see. Now, this original simple idea of signing up for a, and getting, a, getting hardware on demand has become a lot more complicated. 